Hello. Hello. Well, well. Hello. Well, well. Well, we're going to have to see if there's any weird audio stuff in here. I cry in JB. <sighs> I'm going to have to leave a little note here. New set, new machine. Sorry for any... Why am I capitalizing everything? New machine. Sorry for any audio issues. Hello. I'll just I'll just place that there for future reference. Sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna stream for like an hour or so. Hello. a.m. in Michigan. Welcome, Sarah Jones. Still recovering from that 540 IT. How's the audio balance? Is the music too loud or is it okay? So let me all tab. Okay. <clears throat> 10 in the morning in Russia. Nice. Hold on here. How's that audio? How's that audio suit? Is this okay? Okay. Well, we'll see. I'm only going to play for an hour or so. You had to get some game fixing mods today. You could run in wireless. Still too loud? All right. All right, I'll, um, this should be okay. I think that main, I think that main menu music is always kind of loud. Well, let's see. Let's see. This seems like it's not running as well. I have a new machine. I have script extender and tick fix installed. Oh wait, did I set the whatever? <laughs> I don't think I went into the ticks uh, the tick fix any and uh, set things up. So <laughs> what was I even doing? Did I just finish killing Duke? Is that what I did? Yeah, this frame rate is not. Wait a minute. Hold on. Thanks, J Mason997. I thought I killed. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Do I have the four gigabyte patch? I don't have, no, I don't. It's been fine. I only had that one crash in 14 hours, so.
Thanks, Stephanie All. So I'm using J Sawyer, which is the mod that I made. Yeah, there's a stutter. Mm. You know what? Hold on a second, folks. Hold on. Let me take let me take a little look here. Let me do a little tuning. A little bit of tuning. No, it's not what I want. Stuttering is more or less normal, but Tick Fix got rid of almost all that stuff on my last install. I'm just going to take a quick peek here. Have I played Betrayal at Crondor? Yeah, I mean, I played it in like 1992. <laughs> um, yeah, this should just be running. Oh, you know what? I think I need to... I'm just going to try that. Yeah, okay. Let's try it again, folks. Yes, I'm launching the game with NVSE Loader. But I'll check to make sure. What's the, uh, is it get? Is it get NVSE? Oops. Get NVSE version. It's running it. Yep, 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 yep. There we go, folks. You know what? I'll figure this out later. Thanks, Matt. 34325. I don't have the 4 gigabyte patch. This is weird. This is weird. I probably should have tried this out earlier today, but I was busy setting up the rest of my <laughs> machine. It's fine. Alright, so I wiped out Vault 3. I don't think it's this area. This is a relatively self-contained area. This is running notably worse than when I was streaming. By the way, this was my... this. I should say, here's a little bit of dev insight. So, um, this whole area was um, what I used to test most of the weapons. So, there's a... Um, there's a room called Test Josh, Test Josh Weapons, where I tested a lot of weapons, <laughs> tested all of them. But this was also the, um, this was the place where I went for like field testing. I would do a loop around here and I'd fight Duke and I'd go into Vault 3. And it provided a decent like early mid game testing experience, I thought. Do I test the weapons on a wimpy NPC named Josh? No, I test them on um, a character called Test Dummy. How do I just get, how do I get out of here? Oh my, hey, what's this? Nothing. I think someone even made a mod where they took Test Josh weapons and made it like much more robust than what I used. Don't need that. This is a good place to test weapons. It's just, there's like a, like they have a little bit of DR, but not a ton of ER, ton of DR, sorry. They got a fairly wider range, wider range. They got a wider range of weapons. They, they have a wider range of weapons. And um, 
if you do the full circuit and then like go into vault three you get tons of different ranges like you get semi mid range and you get like mid range and very up close and stuff like that so uh it works pretty well yeah this is weird Hey, man. Are there any IRL weapons I wanted to put in the game but couldn't justify? Because of the setting or theme? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, there are a lot of fucking weapons in this game. <laughs> like, actually, I should go back and check tactics. If you exclude tactics, then, like, the number of base weapons and ammo types in New Vegas is, like, way beyond the other, uh, <laughs> the other fallouts. <sighs> Sunset Sarsaparilla Factory. So I got pretty much, especially especially once we got to the DLCs, and I could add, I could add a, a Browning automatic rifle, and I could add, um, uh, 1911 and Tommy guns and all that shit. Opinion on sprint mods? They're good. Um, we were really nervous about adding sprint because of console streaming and stuff like that, but. Oh, the tix fix was updated yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'll experiment with it. What's the watch I'm wearing? It's a Zen 103. All mine. What? Uh-oh. This area clear. Uh-oh. Proceeding with search protocol. Hmm. Please step into the open and identify yourself. Law yeah, the Browning weaponry was in Honest Hearts. This area clear. Proceeding with search protocol. What's going on, Eddie? This area clear. Proceeding with search protocol. I don't think we ever thought through what, what the real population of... Um... Sorry what the real population of New Vegas would be. I think it, it gets a little too specific in a way that... Ooh, I didn't think it added anything. Did I regularly do testing playthroughs without fast traveling? Not regularly, but sometimes. Boone is having some problems. Yeah, there's as many people as are required to plausibly, uh... <laughs> Scanning for hostiles. I think maybe I can't, now that I recall correctly, maybe I can't really do that much here until I... Please actually get all my auto cap. Open and identify yourself. Law-abiding citizens have nothing. That's not what I want. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, everything is like every like the Mojave Wasteland, like this um Like looking at this map which I can't really zoom all the way out of. Like so this actually uses um U.S. Geological Survey data, but it's at 1 25th the scale. So everything is obviously much, much, much smaller. Um, the, di the exceptions were that we had to widen the Colorado River because at 1 25th scale, you could literally just jump over it. <laughs> so we scaled everything up, down, and then we, we could literally run over and just jump across the Colorado River. So we expanded that. I think we expanded Lake Mead a little bit to get the scale to feel like okay. Um, 
And by the way, here's the thing that I'm going to say. And I'm not often once one to um, tell the fans, like, hey, dude, <laughs> use your head a little bit. But a lot of people will look at the map of New Vegas and they see empty stuff over here and they'll say, I can't believe New Vegas is so much smaller than the Capital Wasteland. But like, there's empty space because it's just desert. It's just a square. It's like if you looked at a map of Colorado and you looked at a map of California but you shrunk the vertical scale of California to Colorado, and then you said, aha, Colorado is bigger than California because it's a square. That's not how maps work. Just just think about it, okay? This area identified mm. with law-abiding citizens have nothing to fear. Do not be alarmed. Or Whoa, what's up, guys? I don't know what the sample for... Did I just fall down? Oh no, I go up. That's not how maps work. I think replayability is more important than post-game play. Personally. Ooh. That's not very effective, is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's smaller. It is smaller. I'm not saying it's the exact same size or bigger. It is a little smaller. But people will, like, look at the map and they'll say, ah, it's, it doesn't have stuff going out to every border, therefore it's smaller. And it's like, that's... That's that's not how maps work. <laughs> mm. You know what? This is not... Uh, I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Where should I go? The world is my ashtray. Ooh. All mine. Whoa, whoa, whoa! My shipping worker. Yeah, the, we, we made things 125th scale because it would be, like, incredibly not fun to <laughs> to actually walk the real distance. Mm. This frame rate is... What is going on? I have a much better video card. I, yeah, I'm going to need to... I'm going to need to fix some things. What's up? No. Oh. Oh no. What is going on? Did I fall down here? What's going on? Get me out of this whack-ass sarsaparilla factory. What's the new PC? Mm, it's a Dell of some sort. Oh, hello.
okay, hold on, hold on. What is my new machine? Let's find out. Uh, so my new machine is a, has an i9 10900X CPU at 3.7 gigahertz. Not incredibly fast, but not slow. 32 gigs of RAM. And I got, uh, what's my video card? Let's find out. What's my video, what video card did I get in this? Hold on, dude. A 2070 Super, which is much better than the 970 GTX that I had. <laughs> uh oh. Out of here. Okay. Why wasn't more of world in the game? I don't know. Time for some fod. Win seven, baby. Was New Vegas Script Extender really just updated like in the last two days? <laughs> I have not played any quest mods for Fall of New Vegas. Is Joshua Graham named after me? No. Well, I call it Coyote Tobacco Chew and not just Tobacco Chew because I believe it's wild, if I recall correctly. I got a book. I got a book called... Um, it's like Farming in the High Desert Country. And uh, farming in the high desert country, and it talked about coyote tobacco specifically. And so rather than make people think it was like conventional tobacco, it's coyote tobacco. It grows wild. Is Arcade Gannon Jewish? Like his middle name's Israel. My first name is Joshua. I'm not Jewish. What's going on? <laughs> um, I will play uh, New Vegas. Fallout 4 New Vegas. Should I kill the scorpions just for fun? I'm also happy they named a tree after me. Scorpio season gang. Always good. Ooh. 
That's spicy! Oh, that ripper! I don't like that ripper. <laughs> oh no. Jeez Louise. There we go. <laughs> Boone's at it again. Don't do it! Boone! Fucking idiot, dude. Boony, boon, boon. Oh, no, no grenade. Right, right uh, none of that left. Eat this. Well, I can't use explosives like super effectively in here. Okay, let's 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 dance. Let's dance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nice blast radius. <laughs> wow. Well. Shake this off. Did I do it? Did I murder all these guys sufficiently? No, Boone wasn't meant as an easy mode companion. I think he just, it just works very well because Especially in exterior spaces, his rifle is very accurate. So, ooh, that's a good value. Great value. How much is a combat knife? Sure. Sure, why not? Ooh, give me that maze. Yeah, that sweet maze. I'm going to eat that later. <laughs> I love eating food I take off of corpses. Yeah. Great value, 44 Magnum. That'd be like a 41 special, I guess. That was a very stupid joke. That's not what I meant to... Oh, God. What outfit did I just pick up that I didn't mean to? A cruiser. Wait, I think rippers are worth... Eh. Give me that. Well, great to murder.
Good murdering, everybody. Um. My desktop wallpaper? Or do you mean my, my, uh, wallpaper? You mean my background behind? It's not actually my desktop background. Um, it's a, uh, it's a totem taunts. It's a dance of death from, I can't remember. And I'm thirsty. Got to keep going back to Dr. Usanagi. Was there a recommended level for clearing out the death claws in the quarry? Yeah, it was supposed to be later in the game. What's up, guys? Hello. You're back. Wounded. Some... All right. Here's the caps. Have I seen the no carry weight runs? No. Star Trek style phasers. I think what I meant is continuous beam weapons. Damogism. <laughs> I remember you saying a while ago that Star Trek style phasers were tried but weren't feasible due to engine issues. Yeah, basically like a continuous beam weapon, it just didn't um it didn't work very well. Just didn't work very well. Um yeah, like doing a continuous damaging ray didn't work well. I'm not saying it didn't work, period, or it couldn't work, but at least the way that we tried to do it, not good. Am I thinking of finishing this run? We tried to do a continuous beam, it just didn't work. I have played Disco Elysium. Only about five or six hours of it though. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going where the wind takes me. You know what though? You know what though? You know what though? You know what? You know what? Sell some stuff. How did I make this game in 18 months? With a bunch of great people. Welcome, sir or madam. Do you wish to purchase something? I am ready to process our transaction. The only mod adding in such a weapon you've seen basically uses perfect accuracy automatic with an insane rate of fire. Yeah, and like, it, it gets weird. It, again, I'm not saying that it cannot work. It's that when we tried to make it work, it got um, odd. <laughs> Well, let's let's sell some of this stuff. Was the final say with you for the soundtrack? Yes, I picked I picked all the songs in the soundtrack. <clears throat> I must have some other stuff. I don't need. Well, that's not worth that much. Caravan shotgun, frag mines. No, I don't want to sell that. Nothing of great value. Give me that. That's still not enough. How did you get the Archimedes 2 weapon to not break everything? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it still is super buggy. I think. I like Johnny Guitar. I'm not going to apologize for Johnny Guitar. If you don't like it, tough shit. It's a good song. Sorry if you got tired of it. 
That's the only thing, if you got tired of it. But it's a good song. I need more, 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 more. Hold on, let's see if, uh... Who wrote the Sierra Madre characters and story? That was all Chris Avalon. Come back and see us again soon. Hey, man. Fine by me. Anything that I could sell? Like a bunch of 10 millimeter submachine guns? What else could I sell? Ooh. Wait, why do you have a 10 millimeter submachine gun equipped? Gotta sell that revolver. Where's his rifle? Where's this dude's rifle? What's going on? What's going on here? Where did his rifle go? Welcome, it's invisible. Sir, That's what Adam. I thought, but Do I you but wish like to purchase something. But I don't understand why he has the 10 mil equipped. It's very weird. I am ready to process our Isn't DPM massively favored by AI? But he wasn't using those weapons before. Yeah, now I remember now. I remember now that you can't take his It does have higher DPS, but remember he wasn't using the 10 mil submachine gun when we were fighting the scorpions. It's not that good. <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> Ooh, combat armor. That'd be nice, too. But I'm going to take the extended mags. Come back and see us again soon. I'm going to game with honor. I'm not going to take advantage of bugs. Fine by me. Why don't you just, uh, why don't you just give me all those? You're not going to use that. You're not going to use that. 10 millimeter SMG does, well, that's, I mean, I'll use the 10 millimeter SMG, but I don't want Boone to use the 10 millimeter SMG. Boone has had some some problems with. I am ready to process our transaction. All right. <laughs> Come back. And see us again soon. Casting was a blur. I don't remember much about the casting process, to be honest. <laughs> nice. Welcome, sir or madam. I am ready to need more 10 mil. There you go. All right. Come back and see us again soon. Yeah, the jury rigging perk was my idea. It was like, there were so many times where I was like, oh, this is like so similar, or it feels close enough that I could use it to repair, but it wasn't exact. So, yeah, I suggested jury rigger. I don't remember who implemented jury rigger. It's probably Frank Kolakowski. Might have been Justin Raynard. I'm not using any other mods other than my own. I'm just going to wander. What? Oh, you know what I'll say? Uh, I don't have any money left. Whatever! <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, the unique guns, it, it makes it way easier to repair the unique guns and certain unique armors and things like that. Well, I think weapon condition helps with... There are two things weapon condition helps with. Weapon condition helps with the feeling that you're in a post-apocalyptic environment, which, like the fact that you have to maintain things, that I think I think that is a, a good feeling. I don't think that's bad or insignificant. And it helps with the economy. I have not visited the in-real-life Gold Spr or Good Springs post-release, but I heard that they put some New Vegas-related stuff in there. I designed the Cazadores and the Night Stalkers. Actually, all the new all the new monsters in the base game. Why is Old World Blue so totally different from the rest of New Vegas? I can't really comment that much about non-Honest Hearts or Grun Runner's Arsenal DLC because I didn't really work on them that much. That was all Chris Avalon. Um, but Chris wanted to make... Um, I feel comfortable saying this... Chris wanted to make a humor-oriented DLC. He wanted to make a DLC where the focus was trying, tr like, actually, like, no, we're just going to try to be funny. Yep, the characters in the game sure do pronounce them all sorts of different ways. <laughs> Who's up here? Let's find out. I can't remember what's up here. Looks like there's a lot of them. Oh, ge golden geckos. Here we go. Now let's get some... Hmm. H Bomber guys here. Yep. Welcome. The laser RCW is pretty darn good. I mean, I am very glad. I'm very glad that the um that Good Springs got like a boost. Cause it's, I mean, it's, it's technically a ghost town. <laughs> there are people living there, but it's really not very many. Did I run out of water? <laughs> Whoops. Did I run out of water? Oh, did I miss a purified? Thank you. Was combining small guns and big guns to back together an uncontested change? The only people who contested it were Fergus Urquhart and Chris Parker. Nobody else contested it. And I was like, it's fine. <laughs> They're like, I think this is going to do this. And I'm like, it's no. No. That was my feedback. I'm like, it's... 
No, it's it's fine. Here we go. Yeah, big guns, like, at first I tried to, um... At first I tried to, um... Design low-level big guns. So the goal in combining them... Was that, um... I just wanted there to be more stuff available from the beginning of the game for everybody to use. And, um, big, it was just really difficult. It felt very forced. Yeah, low level big guns. It just didn't work very well. Like, I was making up, like, industrial things like rivet guns and stuff like that. I'm like, eh, I don't know. And, uh, once I. Once I just said, no, there's just guns, and I split up all the weapons that were previously in big guns, like, is it a missile launcher? Then it's explosives. Is it a minigun? Then it's in guns. Is it a laser gatling gun? Then it's in energy weapons. And then it was fine. Did I ever consider combining unarmed with melee? I mean, a little bit. It didn't seem super important. So I didn't, obviously. Hey, very nice. Yeah, it's just early game big guns. Did it didn't work? Like I said, I tried it, and I was like, this is not good. And the strength stat. Yeah, the strength stat. So I, I tried to make the heavy weapons like a little bit stronger because you have to invest in strength or um, I can't remember the perk name that gives you effectively weapon handling. Um, so it felt like the bigger weapons should be more powerful for their tier. When is my next game? <laughs> oh, nobody knows. What was I doing? Oh, I was going to eat food. What is over here? What am I what am I moving towards? Is this a deathclaw area? I can't remember. <laughs> or is this Vault 34? Oh, this might be Vault 34. Oh, yeah. Radiation poisoning. Although, I don't think I actually am. Yay. Hi, Del Miel. This build is explosives, lockpick repair, mostly. Oh yeah, I was gonna rad, uh, rad away. Delicious. Oh, here these fucking guys come now. That's the last of the ammo. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. Why don't you carry some Fine of these? By me. Can he carry them? Let's find out. 
Let's find out. What are you? Settle down, dude. Sell these. Oh, that was stupid. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no. No. That was a million years ago. Oh, my God. I fucked that up. Whoops. Walking away. <laughs> Do you know if anyone uses the gecko back leather armor recipes from Honest Hearts? I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery to me. Sorry, Bon. Fine by me. Fine by me. Good night, Ninja Puss. You know what? I should use my I should use my uh, newly upgraded ten mil submachine gun. There's not a lot of craftable armor, but we did make some, yeah, the Beck, the gecko backed stuff. That'll do it. I think speech, like, I don't necessarily like how dialogue skills work as you win, you win buttons in, in conversation, but I certainly believe that speech is valuable. Like, I don't think you wind up finding um, many people that would say, like, oh, speech is bad. Like, you certainly feel rewarded for investing Fine in by speech. Me. It's just, it makes, it just kind of makes the conversation game not really a game. It's like, well, this is unlocked, so I guess I'll pick that. I am not going to go in. Hello, Mobass suck balls. <laughs> Boone, come here. Fine by me. Do I think mods that remove the tag showing which options are skill locked or an improvement? Isn't that already a thing that you can just do? Hold on. Hold on a second. Whoops. Hold on. Oops, that's not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. For some reason, well, I know we added it in subsequent games where you can say, just don't show me that stuff. You can say, like, I don't, 
Yeah, just don't show me. What was the reason to change the speech from percentage in Fallout 3 to a set number? Percentage seems more realistic. Because it fucking sucks. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, like, it's not realistic. If I'm, like, the smooth-talking devil, and it just says, like, oh, actually, no, you actually suck right now, I don't think that feels more realistic. I think it feels random. <laughs> it does not feel good to invest in a skill for, like, really super important critical junctures and then have the game say, like, actually, you suck at that. Even in Disco Elysium, it doesn't feel good. Like, Disco Elysium is a very, very good game when it comes to dialogue and narrative design. But the... I, just, I think die rolls are not... Like, I'm again, I'm not saying that the way New Vegas did it is objectively, like, very good. But I just think percentage, rolling a die... Same thing with Baldur's Gate 3, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why... Especially with a D20. Like, so keep in mind... In Baldur's Gate 3, which is 5th edition, you have your, um, you have your attribute bonus, which is probably not very large. Let's say it's plus 2. Then you have your proficiency bonus, which at first level is plus 2. So the difference between a person who is fairly specialized in a skill and one who has no investment in it whatsoever in 5th edition on a d20 roll is 20%. Like, it just... I, I don't think it feels good. I get that that's the convention. I just really don't think it feels good. There are better ways to handle it, I know, than a flat check, but I just think die rolls don't feel good. Would you ever consider a mix of the two? Yeah, like, here's when it feels good. It feels good in Disco Elysium when you have almost nothing invested in it and you like amazingly make a check that feels good because you just lucked out when you are massively invested and you fail it feels shitty especially when it doesn't seem like it's a very hard check whoa thanks boom Yeah, and the other thing is that you can just cheese the RNG. Well, when you're when you're sitting at a table, die rolls feel a little more important and like relevant because it's a combination of like you are role playing and you're and it's you can't go back, you can't um, back off of that. The other thing is that uh, in the Pillars tabletop game we use 2d10 instead of 1d20. And while it's still possible to fail if you're massively invested, um, it's pretty rare. Like, if you have a lot of ranks, um, the... Ooh, boy. Yeah, I don't like I don't like lying about percentages to like, man. That's the thing. So here's the thing: people people are really bad at probability. Shut up, dementia Precox. Um, like people are really bad at understanding probability. So if you lie to people about probability, you are further screwing up their um, understanding of probability. Like, they already have a difficult time understanding it, so then when you show them false probability to make it feel like they think what it's going to be, like, you're screwing up their perception even more. I don't like that. <laughs> See, now I need water. Now I need definitely need water. So let me tell you, here's a little story here. So when I was working, almost every, almost every, actually every single Deadfire may be the exception. Other than Deadfire, every game that I've worked on that has RNG, at some point during development, testers will tell me 
that there is something wrong with the RNG. And they're convinced, and they'll prevent, present evidence, and they're dead fucking wrong every single time. Every time. There's never, ever been a time where QA has said, hey, the RNG is wrong, and they were correct. They were always wrong. And here are some examples. So in Icewind Dale 2, which nobody played, but in Icewind Dale 2, we switched from backstab to sneak attack because we were trying to adapt it to third edition. So backstab in second edition D&D multiplies the base damage and then adds bonuses on top. So if you have a weapon that does one to eight damage, you could do base, and you have a times five mult, you could have uh, five points of damage or you could have 40 points of damage. It's a pretty big range. And the distribution from one to eight is equal because it's one die. So we switch to sneak attack and sneak attack of um, in third edition adds d6s of additional damage. So higher level, you get more d6s. Best potato chip flavor is sea salt and vinegar, baby. So when you get to high level, you could have 10 d6, you could have 15 d6, etc. And people will say, like, I remember we got a, uh, we got someone who was doing 15 d6. And they said, why don't I ever see 90 points of damage? And I was like, well, because you're rolling 15 fucking six-sided dice, dude. <laughs> and he said, yeah, but I should see it sometimes. I'm like, yeah, like, maybe when you're 80 years old, you'll see that. What? Like, I'm like, no, dude, you're rolling 15 six-sided dice. You would have to roll a six on all 15 dice. And they were like, no, but dude, like, I should see it sometimes. And I'm like, holy shit, man. And so I, like, I did the probability, and I showed them the math, and they were like, no, but, like, still, I should see it, like, sometimes. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> so I went to the QA office, and this is not to slant, because this was just one tester that was being very insistent on it. The rest of the testers were like, I get it. So I took 15 six-sided dice, and I went in there, yeah, it's a very small chance. And and I rolled it. I just rolled the physical dice like over and over. And I'm like, hey, you see what's happening? You see how it's going toward this the, this bell curve? <laughs> like, because it's just more dice. Um, and then finally, after I rolled physical dice in front of them and added them all up, they were like, okay. But it really took that much time and effort to explain to them and then on uh, Neverwinter Nights 2 this was crazy on Neverwinter Nights 2 we had some testers again this is a minority of testers most of the testers understood very clearly how the RNG worked and they were like uh, I think it was Sunfire I think it was the druid spell Sunfire and they were like, well, I'm 25th level, so I should be doing 20, 25 D8. Excuse me, I think it was 25 D8, so like I should be able to do 400 damage. And I was like, okay. <laughs> this again. <laughs> and I went through it, and they weren't buying it. And I'm like, okay, look, I'm not a mathematician, but I've done a bunch of, like, probability stuff. So they, they wouldn't believe me. And I, this was at the point in time where I had taken over as the lead designer. So then I went and I got our programmer who programmed all of our game of effects, Andy Wu. And Andy came down to talk to them in good faith. And these guys tried to, like try to like dazzle Andy with probability talk. But guess what? 
Andy had a master's degree in recombinatorial like probability from MIT. <laughs> so they were brutally destroyed. <laughs> Like, they just wouldn't let it go. <laughs> like, they wouldn't let it go. And and so he explained. He was like, no, dudes. Like, this is how it works. Like, listen to me. This is how it works. And then... Um, so they finally accepted the bell curve. But then they're like, yeah, but the bell curve... They're like, the bell curve is still low. Like, the average of what I rolled is still low. Even after all these instances, how do you explain that? I should be doing 25d8, so the average should be this. And he said, well, yeah, except that if you read the spell description, the damage caps at 20th level. So the max damage you can do is 20d8, not 25d8. And they were very quiet. And that was the end of the conversation. But yeah, people, people don't understand probability very well. That's the lesson. Where did Rob McGinnis go? I actually don't know where Rob McGinnis went. Why is Deadfire the exception to the RNG problem? So I think there are two reasons why Deadfire is an exception to the RNG problem. Um, one is that we used a graze range and that graze range actually helps enormously because when we, sh I can't remember exactly, but when we show, first of all, there's your, you have a very good chance to at least graze enemies. And I think, I think that Deadfire by default displays the probability to hit, not to hit or graze. And because the graze range is 15%, we changed it, it was either 15 or 25%, that. Like, because it's right, like, th what the percentage you're seeing is the percentage to hit, to H, capital H hit or crit. And then grazes are added on top of that, so it feels right. The other thing is that damage, I always made the damage values. I set, I set all the base damage values in Deadfire. And I always made sure that the minimum damage of a weapon was half or a little more than half of the maximum value. So if the maximum damage was 80, I would say, okay, this does 45 to 80. So what that meant is that there was still a range of damage being done, but it was never really a truly massive range, except for weapons like Archibuses and things like that. So I basically tried to work with player psychology so that we were being truthful about what we were showing them. But it was designed to just feel better. Well, for situations like 73, 75, I mean, that's the case where it's kind of like, well, rolling feels good then when you can't make it, but you're close. <clears throat> but yeah, I much prefer making the probability, making the probability display true and work more in the favor of the player's expectations than fudging it, which is, again, what... Oh, we did it. We crashed. I should have taken eight hours to involve, install Viva New Vegas. What are we doing here? What's going on down there, Eddie? What are you fighting? Are those coyotes? What? <laughs> you 
You know what? I was just going to go back and sell all this crap, all this golden gecko shit. I got dehydration. Fine by me. Give me all my gecko stuff. Good evening, the Illuminato. Welcome, sir. Or I. Yeah, I think it's tricky. Like the mini games are pretty simple for lockpicking and hacking, so unless you, um, if you don't gate them with skill, it's like, the skills will feel useless. I think it's tricky. Why was there so much detail put into the unique guns without there being preview mode? Because you can still see them in VATS. I still want them to look cool, dude. Why did I think Golden Gek? Oh, you know what? No, 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 no! Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me back! Don't give me, give me back! Why would merchants buy unrelated merchandises? Cause it's fucking annoying if you have to go all over the world to sell things. Fine by me. It's purely a convenience thing. It's just. It sucks. I get that it's not realistic, but it sucks. Do guns have left-handed bolts and actions just for the sake of showing off the animations? What are you talking about, man? This is Fall of New Vegas. I think I'm putting left-handed bolts on this shit. <laughs> they have right-handed bolts. <laughs> I need a campfire. Actually, I need a workbench. I will say... I. <laughs> I don't get the left-handed bolt. I don't get the left-handed bolt in Fallout 4. I don't. I don't understand it. It seems odd. Maybe that was a choice made to highlight that stuff, but like, I don't get it. Yeah, I tried. I tried as much as possible to have um, to have our guns feel pretty authentic. Where's the closest workbench that I can actually use? Where indeed is the closest workbench? Is it Good Springs? Eddie? Can I use Eddie? as a workbench. Can I use you as a workbench? I don't think I can use him as a workbench. Yeah, I don't know, Veronica. Any reason the Fallout 3 guns like the Chinese guns were included? Uh, they just didn't really fit into the progression I had planned. I didn't think they were bad guns. It just, they didn't fit in the progression. That's all. You have to talk to Eddie to access it. Oh, that's right. Right. 
What's the hunting rifle based on? That's actually the Fallout 3 hunting rifle. I don't think we really changed the Fallout 3 hunting rifle very much. It's pretty close to how it was in, like I said, in Fallout 3. So, Bickenbalfs. Bug City and does it again. Damn, I love those stakes. Speaking of the Fall 3 hunting rifle, what's the Paciencia a reference to? It's not really a reference to ever anything except that it has three shots. So the idea is that you have to be patient with your shots. That's it. That's it. That's the ref. The ref is being patient. I think this is just normal difficulty. Do I think high speech skill incentivizes rushing through gameplay and cutting corners in quests? I don't know if it incentivizes it. I think some people want to play like that, but... I thought... Oh. Come here. Fine by me. The fugly ass 12.7 SMG. We tried. Can't can't knock them all out of the park. <laughs> we tried something. And yeah, I don't think it really worked in the end, but oh well. Oops. <sighs> low speed or er, high speech and low charisma is hard to balance again it's kind of a curse of attributes do I not oh here we go 40 leather belts baby yeah speed run Fine like by me. I don't have anything against speed runs I think speed runs are great but you also can't pretend like a speed run is the way that people actually play this stuff like it's just it's not I blew it welcome sir or madam Belt time. Yeah, I don't have any interest in speedrunning, but like, it's. I think it's cool. Am I losing my mind? Where did those? Did I give those leather belts to Boom? What's wrong with my brain? Come back and see us again soon. <laughs> We have metrics Fine now. Me. Obsidian has metrics now. If the res mentioned in the Honest Hearts is referring to Los Alamos National Laboratory, it's just the the uh, Navajo Reservation. That's all. It's just the Navajo Reservation. Jeez, why am I... Okay, there we go. The service rifle Welcome, charging sir, handle, I remember we had difficulty with I am ready to process modeling that for some reason. I, which sounds weird. I can't remember what the problem was with that. There was something that came up and we were like, eh, charging handle, forward assist, something. <laughs> like, it's been 10 years, so forgive me if I don't remember the exact thing. But I remember it came up. Really? 80 camps? That was a bummer. Come back and see us again soon. Why did I think you could turn golden gecko hides into something? Um, I thought you could turn those into something more valuable. Well, yeah, my barter is not very good. <laughs> Do 
You know what? It's getting kind of late, so I'll just play for a couple more mins. I'll call it a night. It's almost midnight here. There's Golden Gecko armor, at least with Honest Hearts, but I could have sworn there was like a prep tide you could make with survival. Armor at a campfire. This is just regular difficulty. In development, where is the line where possible choices get put in and left out? When does a choice become so niche it isn't worth implementing? Mm, it's very subjective. What are my thoughts on speedrunners using exploits and glitches in order to complete the game faster? Fine. We put them in there. <laughs> like, if it's an exploit and we didn't want it to be in there, we should have patched it out. If it's a glitch, like, whatever. It's a speedrun. Like, I don't... I think that the... Oh, what's up? Oh, Survival 65. That's what I need. Did I have a hard time because of Fallout 3 buddy, buggy engine creating Fallout New Vegas? No, not at all. This engine, I'm not saying this because I will criticize other stuff in Fallout 3 and 4. This engine is incredibly easy to make content for. Look into my eyes. Without Gek and without the pipeline of this engine, we never would have finished this game in 18 months. This is the best content creation pipeline of any game that I've ever worked on. Easily. It's buggy. You're right, it's very buggy. It's buggy and unstable, <laughs> and it's frustrating. But it's incredibly easy to make content for. Like, I'm no, like no one's going to sit here and say, like, no, dude, it's not that buggy. Like, yeah, it's pretty buggy, but it's fine. Like... That's a trade-off. <laughs> like, the, the GEC is an incredibly... It's a fast tool. Searching is super easy. Finding references to things is super easy. Scripting is very powerful. Um, iteration loops are super fast. Like, like when, when I test something, I'm like... Or when I build something, I'm like, oh, I want to test that. Incredibly fast iteration loops. Awesome. The only shortcoming of the tools was the dialogue tool, and we built our own dialogue tool to sit on top of that. And that was fine. Like, it, it took a little bit of investment for us, but that was it. Like, that was fine. Ooh, let's, let's go down here. I'm going to end by going down here. Is the creation engine just an upgraded... Gambrio? I don't know. Look at the engines and you tell me. <laughs> I don't think you need me to answer that question. There's... I, I just really don't... Especially with all the modding, I just don't think you can deny that this the tool set and the engine are incredibly powerful. Like... A lot of people have played this game a lot and don't even know that the New Vegas sewers exist, and it's amazing. <laughs> B-Worm. I worked on the translation of this game ten years ago, and there's one thing about the game that has been haunting me since in regards to game, game content that was cut. Would it be okay for me to ask about it? Sure, ask away. Was there ever going to be a problem, uh, option to use the sewers to get to the strip? I don't think so. You guys didn't know that they existed? Yep, there are New Vegas sewers. There's a whole bunch of stuff down here. Uh-oh, whoops. There we go. Yeah, I just, again, like, I, I just don't understand, like... Look, here's the thing. It's been 10 years now, and, like, there was a time where I was a little worried about 
criticizing stuff. But that's that's over now. <laughs> like, I feel fine criticizing the things that sh are just obviously should be criticized, and the the tool set and the the pipeline for creating stuff is. It's not even that it's not bad. It is very good. <laughs> it's very good. It's again. I've worked with a. I've worked with. I think I worked with like 12 engines and none of them are as easy to work with as this so <sighs> B-worm, thank you I translated a lot of stuff for Ulysses as a base game companion and it was very thoughtful and a great dialogue. After speaking with him, the Legion was actually a choice for same people. When did you decide to cut him from the base game and why? It was, I think it was actually after he was recorded, which is um, extremely late, but it was when we realized like, oh, Ulysses' dialogue is bigger by far than anyone else's dialogue. And it literally won't fit on the disc. Which was a huge bummer, but he had so much dialogue that he just wouldn't fit in the base game. So it wasn't it wasn't even really like it was my choice as much as like it's just not gonna work. Like if he would have fit, I would have kept him, but like he just didn't fit. I mean, so Cass, I want to say that Cass has like 600 lines of dialogue. I may be wrong. So if I get this wrong and someone later says, like, you're full of shit, fair enough. But I feel like Cass had 600-some lines of dialogue, which was many more <laughs> than than other companions. But then... Um, but then Ulysses had... Um, it must have been over a thousand. It must have been over a thousand lines. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm sorry the details are so so sketchy there. But yeah. There we go, rodents of unusual size. Didn't Ulysses have the most lines of dialogue of any character in the game? Yes, he did. If I recall correctly. What's going on here? What is this, Half-Life Blue Shift? <laughs> There's a reference no one will get. Sweet Jill. Half-Life Blue Shift, I want to say, um, like, out of nowhere, required a crouch jump. <laughs> like, when, if I recall correctly, nothing in base Half-Life required a crouch jump. And it just kind of came out of nowhere, and it was like, it was very hard to understand what you were supposed to do. But it was like, oh no, you're supposed to crouch jump here. Nice. The pipes at the beginning of Half-Life 1? Hmm. Ooh. Radiation. What's my uh, lock picking?
52. Not quite there. Well, it's after midnight, folks. So I'm going to call it a night. Thanks for uh, dropping by. Wow, there's a lot of people here. 455. Thanks for coming by. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll um, stream again sometime soon. Until then, uh, have a good night, everybody. Take care.